to the mantra i will start uh, with start off with you uh, let's understand uh, the concept of democracy uh, especially uh, in the contemporary uh, society as we seek to see if actually these elections are going to serve uh, as a litmus test for a democracy across africa well uh I would like to also look at exactly what democracy is and what it has come to be for Africa. Because democracy, as we call it, uh, has come to be perceived differently, even as it was conceived in Greece. You know, that is not exactly the way it is practiced, even in America or in Europe. And therefore, democracy, as we welcome in Africa, uh, to me, personally, I think it, it was supposed to be put into an African context. Because if you want to practice democracy, as you call it, as it is done in America and Europe, there are a lot of parameters we have to take into consideration. But I would like to concentrate on what holds in Africa and what is supposed to be in Africa. Mm -hmm. I must say that we are coming in from the 1960s, we, 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 we came out from a very, very difficult period. Well, I will call it difficult because of what I see to be democracy to be today. Difficult because uh, we were being ruled by monarchs, uh, you know, uh, and in Africa, you didn't know what it means to vote a leader. We just knew that leaders were natural, you know, they just came from father to son and whatsoever. But now after the 1960s, when most Africans started having, African countries started having their independence, now we started welcoming that win of change. And even then, it was not really when we call, talked about democracy. You know, actually, democracy is not a long time ago in Africa. It was it started in the 1990s when we, we had the wind of change that blew from Eastern Europe right down here. And that, that is when we after started practicing what we call uh, democracy, you know. I, and that was when we had what we call the freedom of association, freedom of multipartism, and all of those. That's when uh, most leaders actually, hand, I mean, uh, openly embraced what we call democracy and we have come to have it today in, in, in elections but then uh, democracy as a system of government you know is that which we are we replace the government through free and fair elections i want to underline this you replace the government through free and fair elections but we are going to be asking some of these rhetorical questions whether okay. in africa really there is what we call the free and fair election before we are talking about democracy because if there's no free and fair elections in africa we will not be talking about democracy democracy also means active participation of the people as citizens in politics and civic life i mean we are asking ourselves if africans do not actively participate if they do not actively participate you know in politics do we actually call this a democracy? Then there is a problem. Now, because, I mean, when we talk about participation in civic life and election, they what we call a right and a duty, you know, and we have to come to that. Democracy also means protection of the human rights of all citizens. Now, we ask ourselves a question. During elections, and the way democracy actually is, I mean, you know, perceived in, in Africa, mm -hmm. is there a free, is there a protection of human lives as far as the practice of democracy is concerned? Now, and then I will go to this one, I will talk about democracy is the rule of law, meaning that what? That democracy is guided by law. And when we say guided by law, it is what we call freedom. You are only free under the law. You are free only under the law. And, I mean, we look at these four parameters in talking about uh, 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 democracy. Now, you see, sometimes I would like to get into it because I, I started by saying that we copy some of those things and we apply them wrongly. Yes, we really apply them wrongly in Africa. We, we have had uh, leaders in Africa who, are, who sit tight. You know, leaders in Africa who sit, and then we, we, there is what we call the framework, the constitution. You have a constitution, a leader is supposed to rule for two terms of four years. And uh, after the two terms of four years, the, the power becomes so sweet, and you know, you know the constitution is outrightly smashed. And then what we, we say here, like in some country we have, there's not even no, no presidential term limit. Is this still democracy? This is just some of the questions, the fundamental question we are supposed to ask. But really, coming out from as a traditionalist, I would like to say that we perceive we received it wrongly. 
Because when we see Europe and America practicing what we call democracy today, it is because but they have come from a very, very, also a very, very tough past. You know, let me tell you that America was once a dictatorship. Europe was once a dictatorship. And I've known that they have gone through it. America is about 200 years independence. And coming up today and exercising that democratic right um, as citizens, taking polit politics, I mean, as a part of life, because this is what it's supposed to be. Africans are supposed to take politics as part of their civic right and responsibility. It's not, it's not just like a pastime, because in Africa, we take policy to be a pastime. It's not supposed to be a pastime. If it is democracy, it means that it is supposed to be active, not passive, and that we are supposed to actively take part in what is happening. But then, I understand that. Uh, sometimes, I made this statement in one of the media platforms, and I said, Africa is... Afrique Media, le monde, c'est nous.